All right then, so where are we up to? Well, in the last video, we created this root query right here. And remember, we said the root query defines how we can jump into the graph to query data. So imagine something on the front end, some kind of application makes this root query. They say, OK, we're making a query for a book with an ID of two, and we want these two fields, the name and genre. So when that query gets to our GraphQL server, it's going to look at it and say, OK, this root query is a book query. So I'm going to find that query inside our root query object type inside the fields. And I find it right here. And it looks inside that book field to know how to deal with this query. And it says, OK, well, I know what object type I'm dealing with now. It's a book type. Also, it looks at the args property and says, right, well, I'm expecting an ID to come along with this query. Do we have one? Yes, we do. It's right here. It's an ID of two. So it takes this ID and it attaches it to this args parameter right here so that inside the resolve function, we have access to it. So when we get this query, it's going to fire this resolve function. And in here is where we're going to write the code to find that book. Now, this book and this data could be stored in a NoSQL database or a SQL database. It doesn't really matter where it's stored. We're going to write some code here to go and grab it. Later on, we'll be using MongoDB to store all of our data. But for now, I think what I'll do is just create an array to store some books in inside this uh, file. So underneath here, let's just write a comment saying dummy data. And then underneath, I'm just going to paste this in. So I don't want you to watch me doing it. It's just a waste of your time. So we have a books array right here. And it's just basically some dummy data to store temporarily. Like I said, later we'll be using MongoDB. But we have three different book objects inside, and each one of them have a name, a genre, and an ID. So this is the ID we're going to use to find the correct book. So if a query comes in for the book ID of two, we know to get the book of ID two from this array right here, or from a database later on. So now it's our job inside this resolve function to take that ID from the args parameter right here, an ID of two or whatever ID comes in. And we're going to look at this array to find the book with that ID. Now, I could do that with vanilla JavaScript, but I'm going to make life easy for myself and install a utility module called Lodash. So I'll say npm install Lodash to do that. And what Lodash is going to allow us to do is a load of different tricks to find data or change data inside of this array, plus loads of other things as well. It's a really cool library. So I'm going to say const underscore is equal to require Lodash. All right, then. So down here, we can use Lodash to look at this array and find the book with whatever ID has been attached to this args property. So underneath this comment, let's just say underscore dot find. Then we want to search through the books array and we need a second parameter, which is going to determine how we're finding a particular book. So the second parameter is going to be an ID property, which is going to be args dot ID. All right. So now when this query comes in, we're going to fire this resolve function. We're going to use Lodash to look through the books array and we're going to return or find any book that has an ID equal to the ID that's been attached to the args right here that the user sends along. So in this case, it's going to look for a book with an ID of two and it's going to give us that. All right. So what we need to do is return this value, which comes back from this thing right here. OK, whatever we're sending back to the user, we're going to return. So now when they make this request, Ultimately, what's going to happen is they're going to get that book returned to them. All right. So that is how we use the resolve function to find the data. Like I said, later on, we'll be using a proper database rather than just this array up here. But now we've done that, we're kind of created nearly a full enough schema to work. So in the next tutorial, what we'll do is we'll test this out in graphical, that tool that dummy tool on the front end that we can use to test different queries. So make sure you delete this before you save anything. And then I'll see you in the next video.